Welcome to our session, The Future of Apps and Search. My name is Lawrence Chang, and this is Jason Douglas. Uh, we are Google product managers, and we're so happy that you guys are uh, joining us here today. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, it all boils down to the fact that just a couple simple things, right? How can you make search-friendly apps uh, so that Google can help drive installs and discovery of your applications, as well as re-engagement of your applications. So I'm going to start off by talking about what we think is a huge opportunity. Um, I'll talk about how you can get app discovery through uh, Google Search, as well as how can you engage users with your app through uh, app indexing in our new API. And then Jason's going to come on stage and talk a little bit more about uh, Knowledge Graph, uh, as well as our app actions and how that can help as well. So if this looks good to you, make yourself comfortable. And, uh, and stick around. So let's get started. Now, the mobile app ecosystem has really taken off over the past few years. There's over 1 million apps in the Google Play Store. And every year, on average, users are installing more and more applications to their, to their devices. Now, as you all know, right, it's getting harder uh, for your applications to be discovered and to re-engage users. Uh, we're seeing that people are installing applications and then using them once and forgetting about them, forgetting about them or, and then not using them. So what can we do about that? Well, we think Google Search can help. So let's take a quick look at the web. This year, the web is on track to exceed 1 billion unique host names. 1 billion. Now, even at this scale, search and search-friendly websites are working together to already solve this big problem of discovery and engagement. And we think the same thing, we can do the same thing for search and, and apps that are search-friendly. And that's what's so exciting to us about this. It really feels like we're just getting started, and there's so many things we can build on that we've already done with, with web search and apply it to applications. Um, so let's start with app discovery. So, we wanted to talk about a scenario. A couple, last weekend, I was at the California Academy of Sciences with my family, and we went to the Steinhardt Aquarium, got to see the Philippine coral reef, uh, we got to see some sharks, and so I thought, hey, it might be cool to install some, some wallpaper on my phone. So imagine that I'm searching for um, shark live wallpaper, and you'll see in uh, Google search results, application results, um, you know, right there, all clustered together. So we started doing this last December, clustering app search results and making them more prominent uh, in, in Google. When you tap on any one of these particular apps, then you go to the Play Store. And from here, very easy to go ahead and install the application. Now, we, we initially launched this just for in US English only. And this year, uh, this week, we're really happy to say that, that we, this feature is now available globally. So whether you're searching for applications in uh, Japanese, in Spanish, in Russian, or in other languages, you're going to start to see more application results in Google Search. Now, how can you make sure that your application actually shows up in this cluster of applications in Google? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. So a lot depends on your Play Store page for your application. So, so, so this is where it might be not intuitive to some of you. So I asked Matt Cutts wanted to ask him, so Matt Cutts is our head of uh, web spam at Google. So I said, what can I tell you about you know, how to see if your, your content could show up in Google search results? And he, he told, told me to tell you three things. So here we go. The first thing, basic tips. Think about when a user is looking for your application. What are the words that they're typing on their screen? And just make sure that some of those words are in the description uh, for your application. So it's very intuitive things. Now number two. Make sure that your app's Play Store page is well linked. So as an example, if you have a home page, if you have a website uh, for your application and you have a home page, just make sure you're linking to your Play Store page uh, from, uh, from your website. Number three, don't overdo number one. Don't stuff your description with all kinds of keywords and so on. At the end of the day, it's going to harm you more than it'll help you. But these are some basic rules of thumb you can follow uh, to, to make sure your app can, can, can show up. Um, so now, we've been working a lot on making sure the right apps show up at the right time. Um, but in certain situations, we're still not you know, triggering applications. 
And so here's an example. I actually have a 75-gallon marine aquarium, and after going to the Cal Academy, I realized, oh, my aquarium is terrible shape. It's so dirty, probably because I've been spending so much time on Google I.O. preparation. Um, so I want to do some searches on uh, aquarium maintenance. And so if I do aquarium in Google today, I actually I don't see any app results. But what you can do is if you go to the search tools and click on applications, then you can refine your query in the same way that you refine your queries for images and so on and use. You can refine your queries for applications, and you'll actually see application results there. And this also works on desktop as well. So if you're on a computer and you're searching for applications, you can use search tools uh, and, and, and actually you know, look for applications that way as well. And we're spending some time trying to make sure we improve you know, the quality of the, the applications, the ranking of the applications that show up. And on desktop, you also have some additional uh, tools that you can use uh, to, to filter the results. Now, we also are trying to make it really easy if users have a specific application in mind that they want to they wanna find, to, to, to make it easy for users to discover and to actually install the app. So you search for, you know, how's Android app? How's applications? It's a great application, all kinds of creative ideas for, you know, home renovations and decorations. And, you know, maybe I want to figure out how other people have, you know, displayed their aquariums in their homes. And so I search for the how's Android app. And now you'll see at the very top of search results, an answer card. Pretty prominent, says here's the app. Go ahead and install it from Google Play. It makes it very easy for you to go ahead and install it uh, from Google Play. So, Let's talk next about app engagement. Now, app engagement right now is mainly app indexing. How can you get deep links to your applications from Google search results? And so let me show you uh, a demo of that right away. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw some really interesting headlines about sharks. There is a super predator of the ocean. And scientists basically had tagged a great white shark, a nine-foot shark, off the coast of Australia. And they were studying it. They were tracking it. And suddenly, one day, it looked like something had basically chased down the shark and devoured it whole. So scientists are somewhat baffled, like, what, what could have happened? Is it you know, a giant squid? Who knows? So for years, they weren't sure what, this, what, what happened. So they dubbed it the super predator. So let's do a search for the super predator here. Do a query for the super predator. And here you go. Here's my search results. Now, let's actually check out the first result. It happens to be a website from the Smithsonian Channel. You click on this, and you see that, oh, there's actually a show about the super predator, the hunt for the super predator. And you can find out some more information about that. Further down, you'll see, oh, look at that. Here's an application result for the Huffington Post. This is an application I have installed on my phone. Now, how do I know it's an application result? Well, look at the, the green text below the title link. We call this the visible URL line, actually. Um, and so for websites, you'll normally see a, a URL there, a web URL. In this particular case, we've replaced it with the name of the application. We've also added the app icon. So this tells a user, look, if you click on this result, it's going to go directly into the application. So let's do that. So I tap on the link. and it, deep links directly into the Huffington Post app. And see, you can read some more information about this bizarre mystery of what happened to the shark, and so on. Now, if you want to go to the website instead, you can tap on the open Huffington Post link here, and you would go to the website instead. And so here, we're actually opening up the website. Oh, let me do always. And there's the website. So it's possible still for you to get the website if you would like. Click here. Or let me go back here. Now, conceptually, it's a very subtle visual change from our previous deep linking UI, where the title link now goes to the app. But functionally, I want it, it, it's pretty significant. So a lot of users tend to use that title link quite a bit. So we expect this will drive much more engagement of your application um, than our previous UI. Um, as you scroll through the results, you'll see, oh, look, there's web results, and oh, look, there's another app result, and this one's for IMDb, IMDb app that I have installed. Um, so I don't have to think anymore, like, do I want to search for this in IMDb? Do I want to search in the Huffington Post app? You just search for Google, and very quickly, we can jump into two apps, three websites, all with the same query. So it's, it's, it takes sort of burden off of the user, and it makes a seamless experience between apps you know, and the web. Now, the other thing I want to point out about this is that philosophically, there's a big difference, right? You know, for the first time, we're treating apps that you have installed on your device with the same level of prominence as websites. 
So this, we think, ultimately is going to have a, a pretty big impact on how we can drive engagement um, of your applications. So what do you need to do in order to participate in app indexing? So far, we're very happy to have been, had the opportunity to work with a number of early adopters for this. We announced this past, uh, you know, last December, working with a handful of developers. Um, and we want to thank them for all their hard work and for working with us on this. It's helped us sort of you know, smooth out the rough edges and give us the ability to support a wider variety of applications. Now, we'd also like to thank you know, everyone else for your patience, because we know that, that some of you have been waiting for this. There's been a lot of interest. And so thank you for your patience. And, and we're so happy as, you know, that we're able to announce yesterday at Google I.O. that now app indexing is open to all Android developers globally. So if you follow our guidelines, um, you <laughs> If you follow our guidelines, then we can get deep links to your applications uh, you know, in, our, in our search results. So how do you do this? What are the steps that you need to take? How do you make your app more search friendly? So let's talk a little bit more about that. Three, three steps, basically. Three simple steps to get started uh, with app indexing. The first one, your app needs to support deep linking. Second, we ask you to verify what the official website is of your app. And third, you just basically need to specify what are the links that your app supports. So let, I will talk a little bit about each of these. First, with deep linking. You have a couple of options here. You can choose an HTTP scheme or a custom scheme. By HTTP scheme, what we mean is, if your app supports the same web URLs that your website supports, that's what we mean by HTTP scheme. If you want to create a completely different uh, scheme as well, you can do that as well, and refer to that as a custom scheme. So let's talk about what you need to do. First, your Android manifest file. You need to update that. Now, you know, you find the main activity of your application, and you have to add an intent filter. Now, the intent filter needs to have a couple of settings. You need to specify that the, the action is, type is a view. You need to specify the categories are browsable and default. And that, you need to do that for, for whatever scheme that you choose. Now, if you want to use HTTP-based, you know, like a web URL scheme, you need to specify the data scheme as HTTP, and then your host as example.com in this case, so your host would be your web domain. Um, and then whatever path that you have beyond that. Now, if you want to support a custom scheme, you specify the scheme there. In this case, it would be example colon slash slash gizmos. Your scheme would be example, and your host in this case would be gizmos. Now, as I mentioned before, this is specified, the intent filter is specified for a particular activity. So whenever the operating system sees that someone's clicking on a link of these formats that you've just specified, it will launch this activity. And so let's look at that activity. If you don't add any code there, then basically any link that you have would launch, anything that fits those patterns will launch the activity. But if you want a deep link to something specifically, and you want your app to do something special, then you, you need to add some code to actually parse the intent and do the right thing. So here's just a very simple example. You could, you could basically get the intent, you know, get the data, parse it, create a new intent, and start another activity, and you could do this to kind of figure out where the app goes. Developers do this in other ways. Um, some developers create what they consider a trampoline activity. So the, the intent comes in, and they actually send it to the cloud, to the back end, figure out where they want to send the content, and send a message back to the app, and from there, have the app do the right thing. So a lot of this depends on you know, your, the architecture of your app and how you want to do this, and we won't get into too much detail uh, beyond that at this point, particular point in time. But that's what it takes to support you know, deep link in your app. This is one of the, the most important steps to make a search-friendly app. The second step, this step is what I think is the easiest step in the mall, and I, I think it's the easiest thing that anyone has asked you to do, I think, at all of Google I.O. And so, so you could do it now if you want. If you wanted to, some of you have your laptops out, you could actually do this now. So what do you need to do? Just go to the Play Console and you sign in, and after you sign in, Go to the application that you want to sign up for app indexing or participate in app indexing. Um, and then you look for the services and API section. On the services and API section, all right, you, you scroll down, you look for app indexing from Google search, and then the verify website button. All you do, you click the verify website button, then you type in the domain, and then you know, if you have your, a separate webmaster, then you basically wait. Now, if you're your own webmaster, then you go to webmaster tools, you sign in webmaster tools, You'll get a message asking from the Google Play Store and asking you to approve this request. All you do is accept the request, and that's it. As simple as that. Now, what's kind of neat about this is if you choose web URLs as the scheme, uh, linking scheme for your app based off of HTTP, then we can actually start the indexing process. 
So this is a shortcut to get the indexing started. Well, how does it work? Well, we've indexed your website, so we know the web URLs that your website supports. So we basically take those links, we start the app indexing process. And so this is a way for you to, to get it going. Now, uh, so if anyone asks you, have you done app indexing, you can say, yes, we've done it. Um, but you should still follow up with step three. Step three, regardless of if you support HTTP or if you support a custom scheme, we still recommend you do it. And if you're using a custom scheme, it's, it's something you have to do to let us know what are the links that your app supports. So you have a few options here. I'm gonna talk about the first two, talk about the third one later on. You can add your links to website markup. You can add link to um, your sitemap. So very quickly, it's one line of code in the web page and all the web pages that you want to deep link to an app with. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about this. Now this line of code, we ask you to specify a link rel alternate tag. And it's because conceptually, it has sort of the closest meaning to what we want. It basically says, there's another representation of this particular document, right? You're on a web page, there's another version of this document, and it happens to reside at this next address, right? And so the other thing is it asks you to specify the address in a single string. And this was important to us because when you think about the web, everything is linked with unique single strings. So if you, it's much easier to share things and so on. So we wanted a unique single string. And you know, when you think about linking and mobile, as you probably already know, it's a bit of a mess, right? All the operating systems do things differently. So if you want to create a unique address to a document or a page within an application, you just have to start with what is the operating system you're talking about. So in this case, we specify Android app. Once you know it's Android, well then, what's the unique identifier for applications? It's the package ID. So you have to specify the package ID for the application, and then from here, Whatever scheme that you chose before, you specify the scheme, if it's HTTP or your custom scheme, and then the subsequent path. Now, we like this format because it's, we think it's very, very efficient. Um, and we're, we're taking some steps to, to standardize this through schema.org, and Jason's gonna talk a little bit more about that later on. If you wanna use sitemaps, you can go ahead and add this uh, same, similar line basically to your sitemaps, uh, and then um, you can add it to your existing sitemap, and you would update it through Webmaster Tools just as you do today. So, we've just talked about the three steps it takes, and at this particular point in time, app indexing can start. Now, just like the web and web indexing, it's possible there are errors with indexing. And so we've added some tools, we've created some tools to make it easier for you to diagnose these errors and to fix them. So they're in Webmaster Tools, so you sign in Webmaster Tools. You go to the website, uh, the web domain that you can, you know, sign, that you connect with your, your app. I look for the crawl error section. In the crawl error section, you'll see a new tab, Android app. And right there, if you go below that, you'll start to see on a, you know, links to uh, you know, URLs that are, that are having some issues, right? Um, and what you could do is you could tap on these links and we'll actually show you a pop-up. We helped you try to figure out, well, what's going on? We explain what we think the error is and we give you some recommendations for here's what we think you can do to fix the error. Now, a couple things I wanna call out. You know, testing on mobile can be tricky, especially when you're testing you know, these deep links and so on. So we added a couple tools to make it easier for you to check these things on your phone. You click on the app URI, um, we'll show another pop-up, we'll give you a QR code. You can take any standard QR code reader, scan the QR code, you know, a web page will open up, tap that link, and that will let you just get into the app directly um, you know, for the, the URI of interest. Now, after you've fixed, uh, issues are thrown, you could mark as fixed, and that gives us a cue uh, that we should schedule and, and start indexing again. And so these are the steps, right? You've add deep links, support your app, verify the website, publish app deep links, and on an ongoing basis, you should periodically check if there's any errors and so on. So let's talk about the App Indexing API. This is new. We announced this yesterday at the keynote. Um, and there's a couple main benefits for the App Indexing API. First, you know, the early adopters that we talked to, some of you said to us, you know what? It would be really nice if we can specify the links to our application uh, through the app itself. So we don't have to use a website, we don't have to use you know, uh, sitemaps. And so this, the app indexing API lets you do that. Now secondly, there's another benefit, and this benefit um, speaks to how you can get additional engagement uh, to your application. So let me show you a demo of that. So I wanna show you, talking about the California Academy of Sciences earlier, and um, uh, let me do a query for that. And what you can see here, is an on-device suggestion, an auto-completion for the Google Earth app. The Google Earth app has implemented the new app indexing API. And as I'm doing a query in Google Search app, it offers an auto-completion for this. And I've actually, and it shows it because I've spent some time playing with the Google Earth app. This is something I've seen before in the Google Search app. 
uh, in, in the Google Earth app. So now what happens is when I actually tap on this deep link, it's a deep link to the Google Earth app, and it goes directly to the California Academy of Sciences tour that I had seen before. So as this is playing, I'll explain. One of the cool things about this building is they have a living roof. So when you look at it from the top, it looks like it's this field. They took sod, they laid it with all the sod, and then they took native plants and planted it, and it has all kinds of cool benefits. It keeps the building cool, et cetera. So this is a, kind of, this is a neat feature if you actually go uh, visit. You should go to the roof and check it out. Um, and of course, as you actually dive in there, you'll see this isn't an actual field. It's actually a building, et cetera. Um, here's another example of the Appenixing API. And so now, if you're going to go visit, I would recommend to you checking out Apache's Chicago Pizza. My wife and I were from Midwest, from Michigan, and we love our Chicago pizza. Uh, and so if you're going to go, you can check this out. Now, Zagat's app, I've been to this uh, page in the app before, uh, and they've also implemented the app implemented the app indexing API. And so as you can see, I did a query for Apache's Pizza. It showed up as an on-device auto-completion. Tap on it, deep link right back into the application. Um, and, and it's one of the, you know, even Zagat thinks it's, it's a, one of the best restaurants near the California Academy of Sciences. So that's an opportunity, it's something you can check out. So now Zagat is a pretty good example because they implement app indexing already. And so what that means is they have deep links in, their search, in our search results, right, to the app. Now what the app indexing API lets them to do is get additional engagement, right, by adding deep links to their app from auto-completions. So it's an additional way that you can drive engagement for your application through Google Search. Now, um, the API is new. It's available in Google Play Services 5.0. Uh, and um, the, the auto-completion feature will be available in a very upcoming feature, upcoming version of the Google Search app rolling out soon. Uh, so that was a recap of how you can get, uh, you use Google, create a, a you know, search-friendly application to get additional discovery from Google, uh, get engagement through app indexing and the app indexing API. And now Jason's going to talk a little bit more about some cool things you can do with the knowledge graph. All right. Thanks, Lawrence. All right, so you've heard how Google can surface uh, deep links to your apps directly from search results. And this is made possible because Google is now maintaining an index of the deep links in your apps, just as we've always maintained an index of the deep links in your websites. But Google also has another index, a special one for the people, places, and things in the world. And we call this index the knowledge graph. And we use the knowledge graph and its understanding of the relationships between real world entities to power lots of great new features in search. So for example, the knowledge graph is what helps Google answer a query like Imagine Dragons Tour with not only the web results, but an answer card that conveniently summarizes the events in the tour. So where do the detool, uh, details of this tour come from? Well, they actually come from the band's website. They added structured data to their pages that actually tell Google uh, what the specific events uh, in the tour are, so that those events can then be added to the Imagine Dragons entity in the knowledge graph, and finally used as answers to users' queries in search. Now, if you look really closely, uh, you can see that the vocabulary, or that the structured data, uses vocabulary from schema.org. And this is useful uh, because it means that not only can Google understand it, but potentially others can as well, because schema.org is a collaborative effort between many search engines and lots of other folks as well to establish a common way to describe things with structured data. Okay, that's great, but what does this have to do with apps? Well, we've started to uh, add actions from apps to the knowledge graph as well. And, uh, and this is made possible by combining the structured data uh, approach I just showed you with events with the new world of app indexing that Lawrence was telling you about earlier. And we've started this with music, and I'd like to show that to you now. So let's see. Oh. Oh. Too many technical things going on here. All right. So since we were talking about them earlier, let's try Imagine Dragons. Get this out of the way. 
So while it was nice to hear about their concerts, it would actually be nice to listen to them right now. Well, I can. So you see here a list of the music apps I have installed that can play Imagine Dragons. So let's try Spotify. So just that easy, a single tap, and it starts playing my music. Okay. So going back, now I actually have a lot of music apps installed. Um, so to see the full list, I can expand it. And what's important here is that Knowledge Graph will actually remember whichever service I pick, so the next time it will actually be first in the list. So let's try iHeartRadio this time. So that's super convenient. It's a really great way to get quick access to my music. But what if I want to discover new music? So for example, my daughter is pretty young and she's just at the age where she's starting to learn about pop music. And her friends have been trying to convince her that there's really only one act that matters, Katy Perry. And so here she is. Now, my daughter is also of the age where it's all about videos on YouTube. She watches them all the time. So I'm pretty sure that's what she'd pick. But you notice that iHeartRadio is actually now first, because that's what I had picked the last time. Um, but I also know for a fact that she's probably seen all of Katy Perry's videos on YouTube uh, too many times for my taste. But, oops, there we go. Um, but she can also use the knowledge graph to browse other artists and see what other people have searched for. So, for example, again, she's pretty young and probably doesn't even remember when Lady Gaga was big. Um, and it might be curious, but she can also flip through, see lots of other related artists that people who search for Katy Perry also search for, and for each one of them, quickly be able to get to their YouTube videos. There you go. Okay. What did I do with the clicker? Oh, there it is. Okay. And there we go. All right, so now I have instant access to my music apps uh, whenever I search for music artists uh, or browse for music artists on Google. So we launched Music Actions last week with the following partners. And we'll be adding more partners and more kinds of actions uh, uh, over time. So please stay tuned. In the meantime, since many of you are developers, let's talk about how this actually works. So the key thing that we need to know is specifically which deep link plays Imagine Dragons automatically in Spotify or iHeartRadio or any other service. So the way a service enables this is with structured data that tells Google exactly that. What is the specific deep link that enables the listen action for the music group Imagine Dragons? And you can see that that deep link format uses the same as what you saw with Lawrence earlier. And in fact, you can sort of think of this as this is the deep link for that shuffle play button um, on the screen. And this extra data is necessary to tell Google exactly what that button does and what intent to fire and what, uh, what it accomplishes for users, essentially. So how is it different from that link tag? Well, it's not really. Like I said, it's just an extension. Uh, the link tag uh, format is great if all you need to do is connect a view in your website to a view in your app, uh, which is perfect for search results. But if what you're trying to communicate is something a little bit more sophisticated, like an action button, then this, information, this extra data is very helpful. OK, so that's app actions in the knowledge graph which is made possible with a new world of app indexing. So we've talked about a lot of features today. We've covered a lot of ground. But there's really a common thread that runs among all of it, which is that Google is a search engine for apps too. So this means that if users are looking to discover new apps, they can do that with Google. If there's a search result that can be served by an installed app, Google will take them directly to it. Or if they're just trying to find something that they saw recently in an app, they can see it in Suggest. Or to help users accomplish a task, 
actions from apps can surface directly in the knowledge graph. So to get started, as Lawrence was describing, uh, you can go to the uh, Play Store and sign up, and there's a lot more information on developers.google.com slash app-indexing. There's also IO Byte videos for both app indexing, um, as well as schema.org actions, uh, and even events in Knowledge Graph. And uh, I guess there's also a Q&A session uh, later today. Um, thank you. I think we can do it now, right? Oh, there's also the, the booth. Oh, OK. But yes, but we'll, we'll we can take, take questions, questions now. now if people are. <laughs> Just, uh, sorry, we, well, we'll do the 10 minutes of questions. And there's office hours. Office hours, there's that's office what hours I meant, not Q&A. Q&A is now office hours are at 1 o'clock, is it? 1.30, sorry. So if anyone has some questions, uh, feel free to stick around. Sure, why don't you start? Sure. Um, so my question is, are you going to be opening up the um, music app actions to any app that wants to use it? And if not, how would one become a partner to use those? Um, well, you can give me your card after okay. the show. At the moment, this is uh, a pilot with specific partners. Okay. But uh, we will be expanding over time, as great, I said. Great, OK. Maybe I'll find you after that. Yeah. Great, thanks. Hi, yeah, why don't we go over here? This looks like a great solution for managing hundreds of apps on devices. Um, have you, um, are, are you integrated with Android Wear at this point, so you can do the app discovery and deep links through Android Wear, launch from there? or Android Auto, session we just came out of? Well, so any, uh, I think as, as you've seen in a lot of the demos, uh, most, of, uh, most of these platforms all use Google Search yes. in various ways. Mm -hmm. And Google Search is Google Search, and, and this uh, expands across all of it. OK. But, uh, but yeah, we, we don't have a demo of that. And, and uh, it, that would be, it'd make a lot of sense for us to do something like that. On your config yeah, file, sorry, I, yeah, saw, I saw music group, and uh, you said that you, uh, you index uh, people, things, and, and places. Is there a canonical list of, of groups that we can find? Obviously, you, we can't just make them up, because they have to come from your indexes. Um, well, so the, there is a canonical list in Knowledge Graph, but actually just saying that that was a list in action, even though it's a string of Imagine Dragons, that's Google has a lot of smarts and can figure out which Imagine Dragons that you mean. Is that the question? No, or? no, your, um, your, your, con your configuration there, you said this was a type of, of a, a music group. Yes. And so you know, there, I imagine there are a list of all these different types of things. Maybe it's not a music group. Maybe it's ah, a conference. I see what you're saying. Maybe, yeah. you know, it, where is the conference a, an event? Uh, where do I find that list? Uh, Schema.org. OK. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Out of the four methods that you showed where apps can interact with, with search, so in your demos, most of it was on the search bar. Does it actually work if I search an app on, a, on Chrome, let's say? Yes, or, it does. Or yes. for all the four methods work? So, um, yeah, well, so if you go to, to search in Chrome, Google.com and Chrome, um, you have to be signed in. If you're signed in, we will also deep link to applications from, from there as well. OK. And also the app indexing? Um, yes, exactly. So when we index your application, not, uh, not the app sorry. indexing. Sorry, the indexing API where you the third method. You oh, found. that one uh, right now, no. It's through the Google Search app. You'd be searching through the Google Search app to get those auto completions there. Okay, thank you. Hi, Romain from France. Um, I was wondering, do you plan to expand the uh, deep linking integration to iOS apps as well? So, so today, the, you know, when you talked about some of the discovery features earlier on, where you could look in the you know, uh, you know, search tools for apps, we already are, uh, show you know, I, iOS applications there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, we're focused naturally right now on Android to make as best experience we possibly can. Um, but you know, our Google users on all kinds of different platforms, um, and that's really important to us. Um, so, but right now, we don't have anything else to announce uh, today. Um, but you know, it's something we understand. Hi. So once we do the search, uh, you expect the app should show the data immediately? That's one of the rules? Sorry, I asked the question one so more time? If I do a search, if I'm linking it to an article, say, in my application, okay. and I click that, so let's say for IMDb, yeah. I search for a movie, I click on it, it opens the IMDb app right. with the movie Sorry. directly. Mm -hmm. Now, all this is possible because there's an API for a particular uh, 
data value, like for the movie, at which I can pull yeah, from? Yeah, so IMDb? right now it's, um, you know, we're generating the snippet automatically for you on search results. Okay. Um, in the case of the app indexing API, where there's an auto completion, um, you do have to specify the title. Uh, and so as, met, as metadata. No, but oh, what, if the, what, if, what if the data needs to come as a bundle and I don't have that data with me immediately? Then can I give some sort of user experience in terms of saying that, okay, the application needs to be downloaded first or that content needs to be downloaded first? Oh, in, in the application? Yeah, in the application. So say I search for a article, say the shark article. Now you showed the Huffington, right. Huffington Post thing. Yes, yes. That is a single article which just came out from the web from a website, uh -huh. or it pulled it from an API and it displayed it on the Android yeah, device. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. But now that if it's a magazine, it's, a, right. it's multiple articles that are, that are clubbed into a single magazine. Right. So I cannot just get a single article. I need yeah, to get so you would, um, you would need to create a you know, separate deep link for probably each of those articles right now. Okay, and but then I, it, would be, it would have to map basically to your website if your website is doing something similar. But not every user would have it immediately, right? They still need to download their entire set of articles. Uh, I, so I, if I understand correctly, I mean, I think um, your, app, your app was going to pull down the article. Yeah, right? so it's a so bundle. It, yeah. That's... It needs to pull down the entire bundle. Yes. And then I deep link each article. Yes. Right? Yes. But how does the server know that this particular bundle is downloaded for this user? Oh, I don't think we need to know. I mean, all we need to know is that for us, all we need to know is that the, your application, the user has your application, right? Okay. Does that make sense? And then if the user has your application and we've indexed the content application and we, you know, we indexed the content in your web and you know, it's showing up in Google search results, right? then it's up to your app to basically parse out. You know, once we send the user to you right, with the particular link that you told us, it's up to you to have your app do the right thing. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, but I think there are some certain rules that have to be followed for the sure, app. So, next you know, we, let's take this offline. Let, let's talk afterwards yeah, let's, and we yeah, can spend some more time on that. <laughs> Hi, my name's Craig. Uh, this question might be a little premature as well, but I guess my question is, is given that right now the app has to be installed, um, do you guys have any plans to do, use this for promoted placement or for suggesting apps to install that the user hasn't installed yet? Um, well, we do have, we consider the app discovery features that I talked about first, right? So mm -hmm. if you're searching for applications, we'll surface cluster results there. Um, and um, and, we, and, and you, we also have ad formats as well. So our ads team uh, recently announced uh, that they have a, you know, because you can imagine the same thing would make sense to deep link from an, app, from an ad to uh, an application the same way it makes sense to deep link from search results in an application. Uh, and so that's also something that um, they're out in beta right now. Uh, there's a mobile engagement campaign ad format um, that um, you can go search for it on AdWords and they're looking for signups. So that's another possibility right now. Cool, thank you. Sure. Hi, my name is Lou. Uh, so, if your app requires authentication, how does Googlebot crawl it? So, that's a great question. Uh, right now, we don't. Uh, but <clears throat> we have something in the works, and this was actually briefly mentioned in the keynote um, yesterday. And, it, you know, in, and this is something we've definitely looked at because we understand that in mobile, a lot more times users, you know, the application developers ask users to sign in, right, before they can see anything. Whereas on the web, it's a little bit less so. Um, and so we definitely get that. And one of the things we have rolling out soon is if an application supports uh, you know, Google Plus sign-in, right, um, then you don't have to do anything else. So as we basically, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in, in the coming months, uh, and, but this was, this was already announced yesterday, so I, I think I can talk about it. Um, but yeah, so that would solve that problem, right? So as long as your app supports Google Plus sign-in, uh, uh, yeah, there's a, there's another uh, answer to that as well. Is some developers have basically changed their, the architecture of their app as well, and so when you get a link going a deep link to your app, if the user hasn't signed in, they still expose a little bit of the snippet of the content, and then uh, and above that, they'll ask the user to sign in at that particular point in time. And that's another possibility. Of course, anyone could do that now. Okay, because I've noticed that Googlebot's been crawling a lot of my app in particular, and it's been puzzling how they've been doing it. Oh, so. Well, we, it, we wouldn't, one of the things that happens that, uh, that maybe might be surprising is that um, there's things that your app is doing. Uh, a, a lot of things are basically are like what the, whatever resources that your app is pulling from your servers mm -hmm. um, in order for us to index your app, like, like that, that all needs to happen in order for us to see what the, what's in the, in the app, right? right? But sometimes it's a little surprising. So um, if you have robot robotic resources and so on, but it's not us doing anything with that, like it's literally, you give us the links and that's what we look at, right? And we try to open that link in your app. 
And, but if your app is pulling resources from all kinds of different APIs and so on, it has to happen in order to see the content. But we're not doing anything, right? I mean, in terms of you know, anything else in the data, it's just getting the data to your app. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, so I have the same content on the web and on the app. So uh, I, uh, for the deep linking, I could use the same URL for the website. I could use a new HTML URL for the, for app. the app deep linking. Right. Yes. And I, or I can use the customer schema. Yes. So yes. what's the, the best patches here? for the indexing? Well, I mean, I think because of the, uh, I, I mean, I think we would recommend you can use, basically, I do use the same web URL, same HTTP URL scheme for both the website and the application. So well, uh, a problem I can see here ah, is sorry. that if you tap on the website link, then you will go to the app directly already. So how does uh, Google distinguish that? Will I get two results on the Google search result? Or I will, will I get just one? Because it's like the exact same URL. Um, so right now, what would happen in our search results is that if the user had the app installed and we've indexed the application, your title link would go to the application, and then the link on the bottom would, would go to your website, but it, it would be the same link, that's true. Um, but the difference is um, that link is the one that um, could be used to go to the website, right? So the top link, we're specifying a package ID, which is your Android app. Excuse me, we're launching your app. There's, it's unambiguous. The link on the bottom, you know, the user can click on it, and basically they have to set a preference, right? If, you know, if they have a browser, in their browser, they would have to specify, I want the browser to open this, and then they would just open the browser all the time. It's also page. based on which, whether the user has the app installed. Uh, yeah, right, if the user doesn't have the app installed, you know, it'll just go to the website. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, but I mean, but you can use custom schemes as well, and you can do that as well. So do you mean the best practice is using the custom schema? No, no. I mean, I, I, the reason why I would recommend an HTTP, you know, an HTTP URL is for it can help the indexing process start sooner for you. So that's you know, and, and, and that's one of the reasons why I'd recommend it. Um, uh, but, but we support both. So there's some situations where you may. The other reason, actually, I think, is if you want linking across Android, right? It's also you know, easier to use HTTP schemes if you want you know the link to show up somewhere else in another Android app and someone to click on it and go to your app. Um, then HTTP is better for that as well. Okay, okay thank you. Sure. How about here? Hi. Um, so the HTTP schemes allowed in the manifest right now don't really have like complicated regexes. Okay. Um, so we'll have something where like we allow deep linking to like slash shop, but then the website adds something at like shop slash policies that we don't have yet. Um, and we haven't found a good way around that. I was wondering if app indexing will have all those same problems, and can you recommend any way around? Um, actually, I think we do have something for you there. Um, we, uh, and this is, we just published this in our guidelines yesterday, is um, you're going to be able to specify some more details um, in a noindex XML file. So, um, and this is new, and so you can check out our guidelines for more details, but in your Android manifest file, you can specify an, a link to an additional XML resource. Um, and then in this resource file, you can specify, you know, don't index these particular patterns, these links, and it could be a much longer list of you know, patterns and so on. Um, and I think you get as detailed as you want effectively. And so that way, when we look at it, we're like, we'll know not to, that the app doesn't support those. Yeah, so give sounds, that a try. Yeah, that so. sounds perfect. When, what's that coming out with? I'm sorry? When, when's that available? Oh, it should be available now. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and look at our guidelines. And, um, uh, and to be safe, give us a few weeks. But yeah, this is part, part of what we're announcing yeah, at IHO. Hi, um, I was wondering what you guys make of the app links open standard that Facebook put out a little while ago, and if you're planning to leverage that all at all, or if um, it's just like a tangential project. Um, so, I mean, I think right now, in terms of are we using any of that and so on, we're not. We're not using any of the app links, uh, you know, schema or anything like that. Um, uh, you, you know, so we're focusing a lot on the things that we've talked about today. Um, you know, Android already, with Android Intense, lets you do a lot of the deep linking and so on. And so anything that we're doing to deep link to apps, actually any of you can be doing also on Android. Um, but with that, I mean, I think we are working more with schema.org right now from a standardization perspective. Um, and so we are definitely thinking that, hey, you know, we should be working with more, co more companies on this. Um, but that's currently the path we're, we're taking. Um, Anything else you want? I guess specifically, like, yeah. in order to do some sort of cross-platform, like iOS deep linking in addition to Android deep linking, are you thinking about doing anything like app links, or is that? 
a different tactic you're going to take? Um, so I think this goes back to the iOS question. Yeah. And, um, and I have, I think, the same answer for the iOS question there. That, uh, yeah, we recognize that, yeah, yeah iOS is, is, is an important platform. We recognize we have users there as well. Um, and Applinx does propose some solutions there. Um, is schema.org, do we have anything on schema.org yet for iOS? Um, so just in case yeah, you know, no, I mean, it's, do we it's, know, do you, do you, schema.org is, uh, it's what, it's Microsoft, Yahoo, mm -hmm. Bing. Yeah, Google in fact, uh, uh, Microsoft has been using uh, the schema.org, schema for um, Windows deep linking. So, cool. does that answer your question? We'll see. But in, <laughs> in general, I mean, we think, uh, yeah, we, you know, we're focused a lot right now on making a good experience from our search results, search experience, but certainly, you know, we're, we're generally happy, though, the way the momentum is going in the industry, right? I mean, more applications are supporting deep linking, which is great, right? That's one of the, the most important things to creating a, a search-friendly app. And to the extent that people do that with applicants, that's, in general, that part of it is quite positive, right? We think the momentum in the industry is, is good. Okay, yeah, I, I, I work in gaming, and I was wondering if you guys had seen any good use cases of, of, uh, of deep linking and app indexing with, with games in particular? Or? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think there are some really, really cool applications that we can do for games. I'd love to talk to you more about that afterwards. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, anything else? Are we, are we? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're in the red. <laughs> we're in the red. Uh, are we okay? Or is there not a session next? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. If the, since the user's in search mode and they press on a deep link and it takes them inside of the app, yeah. is the app switcher becoming the equivalent of the back button for a web browser? Like, how, is, how can we make that more simple for them to go back and forth? Because a search seems like they have to iterate and change their query. Didn't they show some stuff about that in the keynote? Okay. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, I think, so in the, the case that I was talking, that I showed, right, I went to Huffington Post, hit the back button. Um, it should have gone back to the search results. Okay. Uh, I think that, is that, is Are that you guys working about? on anything to, like, extract, like, the action intent to run that in the background inside of the Google search query results so you could, like, press play on Spotify, the Spotify result that haven't played in the browser, or? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm following. Sorry. Like a background intent, like iOS is working on extensions of you can make a call and have the Spotify app. Oh, background. Okay. Yeah. The, the so browser. Uh, all of the action stuff is using the intent system. So the various capabilities of the intent system might be leveraged over time for. But yeah, right now we're, we're we're opening your app. I mean that's um, yeah. Uh, maybe last question. Cool. Uh, real quick on uh, thinking about an app as this like. Uh, equal to a website, um, I wasn't clear. Would would the search result ever show uh, an app that you haven't installed yet on your device? Uh, well, it, it does today, actually, through um, through you know through if you search for applications, where it's through your Play Store, but not in the data. organic results, just in the app pack. Um, well, uh, I think about them as similar. That yeah, it's they're organically ranked okay. and they show up in our search results. Okay, um, and so so we do have that. I mean, so you can find applications, uh, you know, content there. But I will say that, you know, this is still, I think, very early. Yeah. And there's just a lot more we can do. So I think we could potentially hit a lot more of these interesting cases, probably the ones maybe that you're thinking about. Okay. Well, that's one um, of the nice so. things about having equivalence between the website and the app is so, yeah, you know, the user hopefully gets the best experience whichever state they're in. What if you only had an app and no website? Would that ever get indexed? So, so you, right now, your app would show up if you have a game, for instance, like, and you're searching for it in Google, we'll, we'll show you, we'll surface your game. And then I think the Google Earth example is a good one, right? If you start using the app indexing API, that's that's the way we, one way we can start driving engagement of your application, uh, you know, of your game. And Google Earth doesn't have a website. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Thank you guys so much for your time. Appreciate it.